ओके सो नाउ विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ हाइपर थायराइडिज्म इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो वी टॉक्ड अबाउट हाउ डू यू डायग्नोज अ पेशेंट विद हाइपर थायराइडिज्म द साइंस एंड सिम्टम एंड द कॉजेस ऑफ हाइपर थायराइडिज्म इन डिटेल इन दिस वीडियो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ हाइपर थायराइडिज्म इन डिटेल इन व्हेनेवर अ पेशेंट प्रेजेंट्स टू यू विद हाइपर थायराइडिज्म पेशेंट हैविंग स्वेटिंग ट्रेमर्स पल्पिटेशंस टैकिकार्डिया डायरिया विद वेट लॉस दीस पेशेंट्स आर वेरी सिम्टोमेटिक सिम्टोमेटिक थेरेपी मस्ट बी गिवन इन दीस पेशेंट्स the symptomatic therapy the main drug of choice in these patients is beta blockers and the first line drug is propanolol propanolol is the main drug for symptomatic therapy in these patient propanolol is a beta blocker and it blocks the sympathetic overdrive in the patients with hyperthyroidism it blocks beta 1 receptors and it reduces the heart rate it also acts on beta 2 and reduces the peripheral effects of the sympathetic overactivation 10 to 40 mg per orally every 6 to 8 hours is given in patients with hyperthyroidism another very important effect of propanolol which the other beta blockers do not have is that it decreases the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 t3 is more active form of thyroid hormone so it blocks the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 and reduces the symptoms of hyperthyroidism other alternatives include atenolol metoprolol but remember atenolol metoprolol only have effect on beta 1 and they act on heart and they do not have any peripheral action on t4 to t3 conversion if the patient is having severe thyrotoxicosis or thyroid storm and the patient is admitted with you in icu in that patient you can use iv infusion of esmolol 50 to 100 microgram per kg per minute iv infusion with a maximum dosage of 200 microgram per kg per minute what if the patient is having hyperthyroidism and patient also has a contraindication to beta blocker like severe asthma or renots phenomena in these patients you cannot give beta blocker in these patients you can use calcium channel blockers like verapamil 80 to 120 mg per orally every 6 to 8 hours or diltiazem 6 to 90 mg per orally every 6 to 8 hours these are calcium channel blockers and they act specifically on heart they do not have any peripheral action so main drug is propanolol it because it has peripheral actions as well as it blocks beta 1 beta 2 uh, blocks the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 but if you cannot use that drug then you have other options available as well in icu use esmolol as we said that hyperthyroidism patients are very prone to get atrial fibrillation and arrhythmias because these patients are having sinus tachycardia overworked heart and afib is very common in these patients and afib is commonly treated with amiodarone the rhythm control treatment of afib includes amiodarone but remember in patients with hyperthyroidism if they have atrial fibrillation do not use amiodarone because amiodarone itself can cause hyperthyroidism so you don't use amiodarone in patients having afib with hyperthyroidism remember afib may be refractory to treatment until antithyroid therapy has been initiated because the cause is hyperthyroidism you have to treat the cause then treat the atrial fibrillation now coming to the definitive treatment of hyperthyroidism in definitive treatment of hyperthyroidism we have antithyroid drugs that treat hyperthyroidism radioactive iodine ablation radioactive iodine is given and it is taken up by thyroid gland and it destroys the thyroid gland and destroys the abnormal tissue that is producing excess amount of thyroid hormone surgery you remove the thyroid gland and remove the gland that is producing excess thyroid hormones now the most common cause of hyperthyroidism as we know is graves disease and in graves disease all three of them can be used as an initial therapy but mainly antithyroid drugs are usually used as the treatment of graves disease in patients of graves disease in which you cannot use antithyroid drugs you can go for radio iodine ablation or surgery radioactive iodine ablation and surgery are mainly preferred in the patients with toxic multinodular goiter or toxic adenoma because toxic multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma do not respond very well or they are not very well controlled with antithyroid drugs so in these condition you need to ablate or remove the thyroid gland that is producing excess amount of thyroid hormones but remember graves disease you can also go for radioactive iodine ablation and surgery now what are the antithyroid drugs that can be used in antithyroid drugs the most patients are usually started on methimazole carbimazole can also be used methimazole 5 to 40 mg per orally every 12 to 24 hours is started with a maximum dose of 40 mg per day this is the starting dose this is a bit higher dose than the maintenance dose you initiate the treatment and after you have controlled the condition you can slowly taper off the dose of methimazole if a patient is having thyroid storm 
or if the patient is in first trimester of pregnancy in that condition methimazole is not used in thyroid storm propyl thiouracil is very effective and remember if in exams they ask you that patient is having thyroid storm which drug is to be used remember do not forget propyl thiouracil is the main drug in the treatment of thyroid storm and in patients with first trimester of pregnancy and hyperthyroidism in these patients you cannot give methimazole because methimazole is a teratogenic drug and it causes aplasia cutis in which there is abnormal skin production the skin is not formed properly and it is a teratogenic drug you cannot give methimazole in the first trimester of pregnancy so these are some important uh, high yield points that you must know that usually the starting drug is methimazole but in patients with thyroid storm propyl thiouracil is used in patients with first trimester of pregnancy propyl thiouracil is used propyl thiouracil 50 to 150 mg per orally every 8 to 12 hours is used so if a patient comes to you with pregnancy and patient also has hyperthyroidism in the first trimester you use propyl thiouracil you do not use methimazole as it is teratogenic and causes aplasia cutis as well as coenal atresia in the second trimester and third trimester you can shift the patient back to methimazole but why are we shifting patient back to methimazole why are we not continuing the propyl thiouracil this is an important question because propyl thiouracil also comes with a black box warning that it is a hepatotoxic drug so propyl thiouracil is a hepatotoxic drug and you cannot use it for a longer period of time that is why it is also not the first line drug for the treatment of hyperthyroidism methimazole is commonly used propyl thiouracil is a hepatotoxic drug propyl thiouracil is a hepatotoxic and it is only used on the need basis where you cannot uh, use methimazole like in patients with first trimester of pregnancy and it is more effective in patients with thyroid storm methimazole causes aplasia cutis and coenal atresia this is a picture showing an infant with aplasia cutis where the skin is not properly formed so a patient came to you with hyperthyroidism patient was not having pregnancy you started methimazole to the patient then you measure free t4 and t3 level 2 to 6 weeks later if they are normal it means that you have controlled the disease once you have controlled the condition now you can shift the patient to maintenance dose the initial dose was 5 to 40 mg per orally bd or od then you can shift the patient to a reduced dose 5 to 15 mg daily patients of graves disease usually become euthyroid and their condition is controlled within 12 to 18 months an important thing to remember whenever you are starting antithyroid drug is that you have to monitor cbc and lfts in these patients you follow up these patients and you monitor the tfts you also monitor the cbc and the lfts because uh, these uh, antithyroid drugs can cause agranulocytosis especially the methimazole is notorious for causing agranulocytosis so you monitor the cbc and you they are also hepatotoxic especially the propylthyroid cell and you monitor the lfts Antithyroid medications can also be given before the surgery or radio iodine ablation to normalize the thyroid function test. Now, in patients with toxic multinodular goitre, toxic adenoma, you cannot use the drug specifically to control the disease. You have to go for the ultimate surgery or radio iodine ablation. But preparing the patient for the surgery uh, so that the patient has a controlled disease when you go for the surgery and within the surgery, they do not go into thyroid storm due to the presence of large amount of uh, preformed thyroid hormones. So you actually give the antithyroid drugs till the time their thyroid function are normal then you remove the, the gland that is producing excess amount of thyroid hormone radioactive iodine ablation is indicated in patient with toxic multinodular goiter toxic adenoma patient having high surgical risk and cannot go for surgery patients with graves disease that are not responding to the treatment not that are not responding to the antithyroid drugs patient having contraindication to the antithyroid drugs patients having liver disease patient having a major adverse reaction to the drugs in that grave, graves disease patient you can go for surgery or if the patient just wants the removal of the thyroid gland and they want to just get done with the condition so patient's choice is an important factor that can drive you to the option of surgery the contraindication of iodine ablation include pregnancy in pregnancy you cannot use radio iodine because it is teratogenic in breastfeeding women you cannot use radio iodine ablation in children less than five years of age radio iodine ablation cannot be used because the rapidly growing cell can get disturbed and there can be tumor formation moderate to severe graves of thalmopathy remember this is a very high yield and commonly tested point in exams that they would uh, uh, give you an option of radio iodine ablation and patient has thyroid of thalmopathy remember it is contraindicated because thyroid of thalmopathy worsens with radio iodine ablation treatment
very high yield point. Now let's say if a patient has toxic multinodular gaiter and you want to go for radio iodine ablation. Radio iodine ablation, you give radioactive iodine to the patient and that is taken up by the thyroid gland and thyroid gland uh, is destroyed by the radiations of that radioactive iodine. Radioactive iodine can cause transient worsening of hyperthyroidism initially because it destroys the gland and releases the preformed toxins. It can be reduced by preparing the patient with antithyroid drugs initially. Make patient euthyroid before going for radio iodine ablation. You, you make the patient euthyroid by giving methimazole and you discontinue it two to three days before the treatment of radio iodine ablation. Why do you discontinue it two to three days before? This is an important question because uh, we want the thyroid gland to take up the radioactive iodine. If you keep giving methimazole till the day of the uh, radio iodine ablation, that uh, thyroid gland will not take up the radioactive iodine. So you discontinue it two to three days before the radio iodine ablation so that thyroid gland can take up the radioactive iodine. If they take it till the very last day, the, the gland will not take up the radioactive iodine. Avoid excess iodine for the seven days prior to radio iodine ablation to block the wolf chaikoff effect. What is wolf chaikoff effect? I have explained it in detail in the video on the clinical symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Single oral dose of iodine 131 is used. Remember, the 131 iodine is used for radio iodine ablation. It is taken up by the thyroid gland and it emission of the beta radiation destroys the thyroid gland. You tell the patient to stay away from children for the next few days because uh, there is radiation coming out and that person, if a patient is having a school teacher, you tell that school teacher that you have to take leave for the next few days because uh, there is a risk that you will transmit these waves to the children and the children can get affected. What are the indications of thyroid surgery? The indications of thyroid surgery includes large goiter that are causing dysphagia, hoarseness, compressive symptoms. If you see a large goiter, that patient is usually a candidate for surgery and you refer them to the surgical department. Obstructive symptoms of dysphagia, hoarseness, Graves disease with moderate to severe ophthalmopathy which is unresponsive to the treatment in that patient you go for surgery. Radio iodine ablation is contraindicated in patients having severe ophthalmopathy. Toxic adenoma, multinodular goiter, thyroid malignancy if found remove that thyroid malignancy. If the patient wants surgery go for the surgery. Planned pregnancy in the next six months, you go for the surgery. Before going for the surgery, you achieve euthyroidism. You give the patient medications to uh, normalize the thyroid function tense, and then you go for the surgery because if you open up the thyroid gland like this before normalizing the TFTs, there is a chance that that patient will go into thyroid storm during the surgery and will die from it. For at least four to eight weeks, you euthyroid the patient. Potassium iodide solution 50 to 100 milligram per orally every 8 hourly is given preoperatively and that is the wolf chaikoff effect so that the uptake of iodine is blocked by the thyroid gland and when you remove it, so they, it cannot produce the thyroid hormones. So basically you are actually uh, blocking the uptake of uh, iodine by giving excess iodine from outside uh, that is to inducing the wolf chaikoff effect so that it does not produce thyroid hormones during the surgery. As you are removing the thyroid gland, there is a chance that you may also remove the parathyroid gland. So calcium and vitamin D are replaced. Graves disease and toxic multinodular goiter usually near our total thyroidectomy is done. Remember total thyroidectomy is a preferred treatment for the Graves disease and toxic multinodular goiter. If someone gives you an option uh, for the treatment, surgical options for the Graves disease, go for total thyroidectomy. Isolated uh, toxic adenoma, single adenoma, you can remove the lobe which is having that toxic adenoma. Post-operatively, you measure the serum calcium and PTH level because behind these thyroid glands, there are parathyroid hormone and there is a high chance that you remove the parathyroid hormone and there will be hypocalcemia and hypoparathyroidism. So you have to look for calcium and parathyroid hormone level even after the surgery. Complications of hyperthyroidism include thyroid storm, a very huge complication. I have talked about thyrotoxicosis and thyroid storm in detail in my video on thyrotoxicosis and thyroid storm uh, the, that is also present in the playlist of emergency medicine. There is a huge playlist of emergency medicine that contains all different videos on different emergencies and their treatments. Please make sure to check them out. Before going into the summary, if you like my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about the treatment, symptomatic treatment with beta blocker, propenolol being the most important one, it blocks the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. 
severe thyrotoxicosis in ICU treated with esmolol. If there are contraindications to beta blocker, go for calcium channel blockers. Avoid amiodarone for the treatment of AFib in hyperthyroidism. Definitive treatment include for a Graves disease. All three options are there. Antithyroid drugs are usually used for Graves. Radioactive iodine and surgery is preferred in these conditions. If you start methimazole, you start it from 5 to 40 milligram. And if there is thyroid storm, you use propyl thyroresyl. In first trimester of pregnancy, methimazole is not used because it causes aplasia cutis and coenal atresia. In second trimester, third trimester, methimazole is again restarted because propyl thyroresyl is hepatotoxic. This is picture showing a plasia cutis. If methimazole is started, follow up with TFTs. Shift the patient to maintenance dose if TFTs are normal. Monitor CBC and LFTs as it causes agranulocytosis. You give uh, antithyroid treatment before radioiodine ablation as well as surgeries. The indications of radioiodine ablation and the contraindication of radioiodine ablation, especially children and pregnant females. You prepare the patient for radioiodine ablation. You give antithyroid drug and you thyroid the patient. Then you ask the patient to stay away from children. The indications of thyroid surgery and how do you prepare a patient with thyroid surgery by giving potassium iodide and inducing the wolf strike off effect. The Graves disease treatment, total thyroidectomy, preferred treatment, post-op, Meyer serum, calcium and PTH levels. Complications include thyroid storm. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine, endocrinology lectures, ECG lectures. The link of those videos is given in the playlist below. Thank you very much.